throughout our lives, there are so many events that we don't remember. And then there are those that we can never forget. And that's where my story starts. When my son Ben was just six weeks old and he still weighed only six pounds and suddenly he was so fussy that I knew something was wrong. The doctor said, Ben has a hernia and I breathed a sigh of relief. I could handle that. But then she said, I also hear a heart murmur that wasn't there before and we better get that checked out first. Now, I was getting nervous. I asked if she could recommend a doctor. And she said, I think you better take your son to the hospital right now. I'll call ahead. You call your husband and have him meet you there. And those th few words completely changed my life. Three days later, my son had his first heart surgery. And the surgeon reported that all went well, but just two weeks later, Gary and I were racing back to the hospital. I'll never forget the look on my son's face as he struggled for air while I held him in the back seat of the car and urged Gary to floor it. It was the longest 45 minutes of my life. And several hours later, Ben was wheeled back into the operating room and I stood paralyzed with fear as I watched him get ready for a 12-hour procedure, one that he was given just one chance in 100 for survival. But that was 33 years ago. Those early surgeries and Ben's subsequent diagnosis with a rare genetic condition set me on a path I had never imagined. I was shocked at the diagnosis. I was terrified for Ben, and I was pretty terrified for me. I was afraid I wouldn't be able to measure up as the mom of a child with special needs. But above all, I was determined. I would do everything I could to help my son. And my determination led me to start my impossible. They say that starting can often be the hardest part, especially when we have time to think about it, to talk ourselves out of something. But in my case, it was much simpler. It was accidental, just one small step. Prior to Ben's birth, I was a corporate photographer. Whenever anybody ever asked me if I would come back to work after my baby was born, I answered immediately, absolutely. I loved my job. I was proud to be a woman working in a man's world, and I was pretty good at it. I took the mandatory six months, six weeks off for maternity leave, and on the day I was due back at uh, in the office, Ben had that first surgery. I called from the ICU to tell them I wouldn't be in that day. So they gave me two more weeks off. And as I've already said, two weeks later, Ben had that second extremely critical surgery, and he was hospitalized that time for three long months. And I never gave a second thought to the fact that my career as a corporate photographer was on an indefinite hold. Fast forward four years, five surgeries, hundreds of hours of therapy later, but so much had changed. Ben's brother Adam was two years old, and Ben had turned a corner. He was talking and singing. He finally had started to walk. I loved being home with my guys, but I had begun to need something else. I was feeling isolated, so I picked up my cameras again, like all photographers do, and I began to shoot weddings and portraits, and, and that was pretty good. But something was still missing. And that's when I took that one small step. I volunteered to help a tiny nonprofit that was dedicated to helping families affected by Williams Syndrome. It had only been four years since Ben's diagnosis, and we still knew almost nothing about Williams Syndrome. Ben's future was unknown, and it was so frightening. I was selfish. I didn't want to travel alone. So I volunteered to help the association locate families and find ways for those families to get together. It wasn't very easy. That was before the internet. <laughs> Do we remember those times? <laughs> it was also something that I had never done before and never dreamed that I would want to do. 
And over the next few years, events conspired in a way that I had never imagined to dramatically increase my, associate, my uh, work with the association and in turn to totally change my life. I was invited to join their board of trustees at a, an early turning point for the organization, a time when nine of 11 board members were brand new. That doesn't happen too often. And at my first meeting, the incoming president abruptly left. So new elections were held, and that night I became vice president. <laughs> I would love to tell you that I was elected because they knew about my keen business sense, you know, my intelligence. <laughs> but the fact is, I had never met a single person in that room four hours later or earlier. I was elected for one reason. I raised my hand <laughs> when no one else did. And less than a year later, the new president stepped back as well. Just like that, I was president of the board suddenly in charge of a national nonprofit organization. And all I could think was, oh my god, <laughs> how am I going to do this? Yeah, I have a degree in business, but it's a piece of paper. I was a photographer. I took pictures. I was not a business leader. Once again, I was on a journey that I hadn't seen coming. Apparently, I had missed the no experience required line on the job description. <laughs> This time, I was really excited about this challenge. But at the same time, once again, I was terrified that I might not be able to measure up. But my son, Ben, had Williams syndrome. And there's no more powerful motivation than helping your child. I had watched Ben fight for his life through those surgeries and confront challenges every single day. I was so proud of him. He had so much heart. Failing Ben would be, and failing, and it would be failing so many others with Williams syndrome, and it was just not an option. So I did what I could. I followed Ben's example, and leading with my heart, I forged ahead. In the 29 years since I took that first step, I've learned so much about Williams Syndrome. And I've learned about research and the scientific community. I've learned about nonprofit organizations and leadership. But I've also learned about myself. I'm not the person that I used to be. It was a, a conversation with a science writer that first made me realize I was beginning to see the world differently. He called to ask me if I was excited about the new advances in in vitro fertilization and prenatal testing, advances that he was pretty sure would mean that in a short time, we might be able to guarantee that no one would ever be born with a genetic condition like Williams syndrome. I was shocked that he would even suggest this. I mean, yeah, it would be great if Ben didn't have all those medical challenges or the cognitive issues, but what about his gifts? I knew firsthand how profoundly beautiful individuals with differences could be and how much they had to offer their communities. But the truth is, had he asked me that question before Ben was born, I'm sure I would have answered differently. The fact is, I had undergone amniocentesis when I was pregnant with Ben. I was 35 years old, an old mom. I needed to make sure that my baby was OK, because I was certain that I would not be able to cope with a child who was different. Do you remember elementary school? Did you ever line up to go to the cafeteria or music or art? Ben did that, too. And his teachers always sandwiched him right in the middle of the line, because they were sure it kept him safe. But the truth is, is, Ben was slower than all his peers. So he became the leader of his line, rather than the follower in the middle. And Benjamin greeted everyone who passed with a, hi, how are you? There was a wave and a compliment. It made him memorable. 
It earned him his first nickname. I think he might still have it, Mayor Beth. <laughs> have you ever thought about your community? I never did. My community was just the place where I lived. And once again, Ben has taught me something I didn't know before. Ben's soul is fueled by the responses of others, by being surrounded by people with the same interests and values, by those who truly care about each other and what they do. Helping Ben to find his place, his special place, introduced me to a new community, a community that is people, a community that brings me life rather than just providing a place to live. Ben has significant challenges, but he understands the important things. Ben is compassionate. He understands how important it is to show appreciation to those around him. And he sees the value in his own gifts and his self-worth. Much of Ben's life is a campaign to make others happy, to spread joy all around him, and he has been wildly successful. I don't think that Ben is enlightened enough to really understand the impact that he is having or what he is really doing. But I know that he is honest and he is absolutely genuine. Partnering with Ben has made me more genuine too. And he's given me the comfort to be around others you can't help it, and he introduces you to everyone, and you know no one. He has given me the courage to ask for help and to welcome the knowledge and the wisdom of others. I am so grateful for these special gifts from Ben because they've helped me tremendously in my work with the association as I've grown a tiny nonprofit with just 200 members to a thriving model among national support groups with well over 6,000 members nationwide and countless others throughout the world. Scientists now feel that many of the personality traits that Ben and others with Williams display may actually be a component of how they are wired, the result of a tiny fragment of missing DNA. Wherever they come from, I wish I had more of them. Benjamin and I have always been a team. And he was a baby. He was an underdog, a fighter. He fought for his life, and he won. Ben is still an underdog today. He has become a shining example of the heart that I think our world desperately needs more of. My career since Ben's birth has been to introduce him and every individual with Williams Syndrome to those who can help them, and also to make sure that I introduced all of these amazing individuals to those who they can help. Every success that I have realized along the way is not just mine, it is theirs. My story is about what happened when I let my love for my son take over and I dared to take my hands off the wheel. It's about how I let my love for Ben flow into a love for his whole community and how I joined him on his journey rather than pulling him along behind me on mine. Benjamin has taught me so much. He's made me the woman I am today a leader, a supporter, and an advocate. Ben's challenges and his gifts and our journey together have taught me, and I hope I've been able to show you that our world would be a much better place, a kinder and gentler, more meaningful place if we all just had a little bit of William syndrome.